everybody. Good afternoon. This is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You, which I'm doing today. I'm in my I'm in my fabric room showing my project that I've gotten back to. You must excuse me. Well, no, you mustn't excuse me. I did my I did my um hexagon bedspread. It turned out to be a monster project that was supposed to be mindless sewing. <laughs> And it ended up me using about 14 yards of fabric just for the ruffle. Anyway, I'm back to my project, my quilt, my um, row along with Jean quilt. If you haven't, um, if you're new here, I am doing a playlist. Again, there, see my playlist for in-depth tutorials on each one of these rows. This is a row quilt, which means each row, whether horizontal or vertical, as it grows, as it evolves, is the same block or punctuated again like I show you here with an applique but basically the same sashing the same block over here down here and I will have taken photographs of this so see my playlist the row along with Jean but this week or this time what I'm doing is I'm I've only done one um, I'm making a row of half Dresden plate quilt blocks okay now as I explained in my video you can make these as big or as small, or, no, not as small as you want, as big as you want, as wide as you want, or as long as you want. Maybe you only want two of this size, the, the plate is the same size, but your backing fabric, your background fabric could be longer or it could be wider to make your row bigger if you want and just have two of these. I believe I'm going to be making four of these half Dresden plate blocks, okay? They're unfinished on this edge, but it's a complete finished, it's a complete finished block. There's no raw edges on here. Um, as I was showing you on my um, applique for my sunflower, that was raw edge. This is finished, and this can be done with just a straight stitch machine. Wired, no specialty rulers. I show you actually how to make <laughs> a cardboard or plastic, wh whatever you want, a little template to make this size of these little blades for this size of my Dresden plate, okay? This is a half a Dresden plate. If you want, as I say as I go along, if you wanted to do eight more of these little things and make a little pillow by at a, at a whole circle in the middle, by all means you could. But this is just one of them that I've done, again, in a scrappy method that I quite like. I'm using my fat quarter assortment here and I've done it scrappy but again as I, I explained sometimes scrappy you have to be just show a little bit of care when you're putting scraps together you don't want necessarily three reds together in your scrappy quilt so just just for a heartbeat just think about your scrappy method but that's what this is that's what this tutorial is all about pretty in-depth from beginning to end how I show you no rulers are needed you just make it yourself and um, yeah I hope you enjoy it I did However, use an interfacing like I did on my applique here just to make this back, background fabric just a little bit more substantial when we're doing this stitching. So a little bit of iron on interfacing, but again, I show you how to do that in the tutorial. I really do hope you've enjoyed this, folks. I'm back to this. I want to get this finished up. We're not finished up working on this. I have to think about what I'm going to be doing next. I had no idea, <laughs> but I do have to make, I think I'm going to make three more of these blocks and maybe punctuate it with a little bit of um, fabric from the actual fabric line. Yeah, maybe I'll do that to, to come up my, my full height, my full length. And as I say, you don't have to have it this way. It could be upside down like that to vary it, the look. So I hope you enjoy this. Thank you ever so much, folks. Ian and Maxwell and all the true loves send their love. All right, enjoy the video. Bye. So to begin making our Dresden plate without buy, going out and buying a, a, a ruler if you have it you can use it what I'm using is a, a piece of card from um, a fat quarter bundle um, no yeah 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 fat quarters just a piece of card you can use any card cereal box something you get in the mail whatever just to start out with a bit of card and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be marking a two and a half inch wide by four inch long piece of card okay now I happen to have this ruler which is exactly two and a half inches wide and there is my four inch marking here but by all means you could use one of these rulers here um, if you have it in your sewing room two and a half inches 
you go over there to two and a half inches and then come down to four inches like that. So I'm using this ruler, doesn't matter, two and a half inches wide by four inches long on our piece of card. And I'm going to get a pen. I'm going to line that up really well like that, two and a half by four inches wide. And I'm just going to make a pen mark on that on that uh on that line with a pair of paper scissors if you're good cutting or if not if you have rotary cutter that's used for papers by all means you can use it not your good fabric scissors though i'm going to be cutting my two and a half by four inch piece of card out okay the next thing i want you to do to create this size dresden plate is to take your ruler and i'll take this one and mark on the on the bottom here we're going to go over to the three quarters mark, okay? So we have our half inch mark, our three quarters, and our one inch, okay? I'm going to go over to my three quarter inch mark, which is right there. Line it up. Uh, let me just see. Half inch, three quarters. Yes, there it is. And make a little mark there. I'm going to turn that around. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Three quarters is right there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a straight edge and I'm going to go from the very top corner down to the very bottom of that, that uh, line there, the dot. Okay, I'm going to just connect. I'm just going to make a line. I'm going to go to the very bottom and to the very corner and make a straight line. This will be our wedge shape. Turn it around and do the exact same thing. From the very bottom there up to the very corner and draw a straight line. And there we have our wedge shape. Again, if you have a, a paper rotary cutter, you can cut this with a ruler. I'm pretty good with my scissors. I'm gonna cut a straight line and I'm going to get for this project my Dresden, oops, it dropped, <laughs> my Dresden plate wedge. I'm going to have an, a, an assortment of colors. We don't want to have too many reds. We want a scrappy look for this. So um, I can do about, I can do about four. I'll grab a blue one here. I'm just going to, and I'm, for each, for each um, Dresden plate here, I'm going to be needing eight so I can cut out four of these, making sure each layer is going to be, is going to cover. Yep. And then what I do, I do, I will put my, my uh, little template here. And I'm going to hold my template with my ruler, like such. When you're using a cardboard template, you have to be sure that you don't cut the cardboard. Because you could have done this in plastic if, if you wanted to. So again, I'm just going to put my ruler here. Making sure I have enough room for the blade to go. Or I could have turned the fabric around, but that's okay. Just so I don't... And I'm just going to cut this off there. And then I'm going to turn it around. Like so. Be very careful. And I have four, just like that, I have four of my wedges. Okay, I'm going to do that with four more fabrics. I'm going to choose my four more fabrics, and then I'm going to go over to my sewing machine. So here I have my eight cut-out Dresden plate fans, okay, or blades as they're called. So what I'm going to do is I have lowered my stitch length to a fairly small stitch because we're dealing with um, a, a piece that's um, fairly small here. So we don't want a great stitch when we cut our chain piecing away uh, apart. So what we're going to do is with the pretty sides together, very important, we're going to fold over the top widest edge on each other, like so, making sure it's not like that but making sure it's absolutely square on, okay? 
This is the miracle of a pointed Dresden plate because you're thinking, well, how do you get the plates out of a square edge? Just watch. So now what I'm going to do is I have my quarter inch marking on here on my sewing machine. And I'm going to start at the very top on that folded edge very carefully. And I'm just going to stitch down and I'm going to leave my needle in. And I'm just going to continue folding pretty sides together, making sure it's perfect, sort of creasing it there and pushing it right up under the right up under the presser foot making sure I do my quarter inch seam very important sometimes you might be tempted when we're dealing with small pieces in quilting to to um, err on the the smaller side oh it's a very small piece but no you're going to have to do a quarter inch seam that's very important especially with a Dresden plate so as you can see I'm just stitching this together, pushing it under my presser foot there, being aware of my quarter inch seam. And right off, and then I'm gonna pinch, and I'm gonna pull that, and there's my chains. Okay, you wanna just wanna snip them ver apart very carefully without nicking your fabric. Take your time. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. <laughs> now I have my eight blades here. Okay. So what I want to do now is it may not be necessary, but sometimes I find it a little bit, um, a little bit advantageous is to take a nice sharp pair of scissors and just on the folded part of our, of our um, little fans here, just to clip, just to clip that a little tiny bit of the bulk away. That's all, just on the folded part. So now we have our eight fans. What I do is I, I open up that seam there, all right, just gently. And then with my thumb, with my thumb here, I'm going to be just pushing my that point out, just like that, just like that. And pretty much, with that seam open and the point clipped, pretty much we have a nice sharp point there, as you can see. And then I'll just finagle that seam into the middle. You can mark it if you want, but I don't find it necessary. You can eyeball that seam and just sort of press it like that. I have all eight of my little fans here with their points. I'm just going to go right next door here, over here, and I'm just going to press these. So I have my fans here, my little blades for my Dresden plate fan. And this is a scrappy quilt, as you know I'm doing. Um, just, it's a controlled scrappy for the, all of my um, coordinating fat quarters, but a scrappy look at anyway. But you want some kind of control sometimes with a scrappy quilt, not too much, but in this case, I have two blues and I have two reds and basically I have two oranges and a green and a brown. So I don't necessarily, when I'm, when I'm doing this, I don't necessarily, I'm just going to pull, I'm just going to pull my scraps because it's a scrappy quilt and I'm going to put it together like so. Oh, well, that's two blues, two reds, two. I don't want to do that. Again, I'm not overthinking it, but I'm just going to be pulling um, piles of two together like this. And I think I, it's a more of a pleasing arrangement like as such. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm just going to just for take two more seconds and just think about where I want my arrangement. And that to my eye is a little bit more scrappy than the other. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be working in twos. We are going to be chain piecing these four units in two, two pieces. So what we're going to do, this is my first one here or wherever it ends up. I'm going to be putting the pretty side of my blade to the pretty side. And it's very, very important that you start, this is the peak, this is the valley. It's very important that you start sewing your Dresden plate fan in the valley, okay? 
And don't even worry about down here. We have cut these pretty good. So the, the circle that's going to be make, made out of this is not as important as the valley right here. Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start. Again, I have a smaller stitch length. And again, very, very important. I can see it on my plate here to sew that quarter of an inch. Okay, I'm leaving my needle down and I'm grabbing my next two. And I'm just going to be chain piecing like we did when we constructed them. Pinch and pull. And then we have to trim the units here. Very important to trim very close to this valley. We don't want any straggly threads. If there are, we can always go back and clip them off. Okay, so now we have our four uh, couples here. <laughs> I'm not really worried about pressing any of the seams at this moment, but I'm going to look at my, I'm going to just find my arrangement that I find pleasing, uh, whatever it is, whatever it is. It might have changed from the, the before. Yeah, quite like that one. Yeah, quite like that arrangement you can see there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be taking these two units that have been sewn together and again pretty side to pretty side two and two to make a unit of four. I always go off a little bit at the end of a seam especially in quilting instead of just stopping because we don't because we don't backstitch in quilting as much, uh, sometimes we do, obviously, but when you go off your uh, seam just a little bit, the, the, the sort of the, the thread, the knot, your stitching still goes a little bit. So when you pinch and pull, you're having a little bit of a, a um, togethered stitch, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so anyway, so here are my two units. Look at this, how quickly it's come together now. Okay, now we're going to have this one, one last seam here. I'm going to press all of, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of sizing or starch, and I'm going to be pressing on this side over here. I'm going to be pressing on the, the wrong side, and I'm going to be pressing all my seams just as they want to lay. Okay, now a lot of people press these seams open. A lot of people press them all to one side. But I'm looking at how my seams actually want to lay, and it's basically every other one wants to lay open or not or this one wants to go that way so I press my seams how they want to lay all right and I'm going to just go over there and I'm going to I'm going to just stretch it the points slightly so I have my lovely curve down here just a little bit stretch the, the um not stretch it but like to pull that those valleys out to the the most so now you can see that I have my lovely pressed half of a Dresden plate a Dresden plate okay and again I've turned this over it's been nicely sized or starched and I've just pressed the seams exactly where they wanted to go some of them wanted to be open some of them wanted to be pushed over and I very very gently uh, as I said not stretched it but just pressed it to the nth degree so that it lays with all of your curve here and we have a fairly nice straight line to um, applique it onto the block. Making this video for beginner beginners who don't even have a template or don't even have a ruler or anything like that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I'm going to be appliquing my circle onto my uh, block, my square, but I have to make my circle and all I'm going to be doing is Maybe a lot of you only have a straight stitch machine. You don't have a fancy stitch. You don't have a blanket stitch. You don't have a zigzag stitch. And we're all we're going to be doing. Is I'm going to show you with my mechanical straight stitch machine how I'm going to be doing the, the, the circle that, I, that I, we have in the middle here and then around the edges. But right now we have to determine, you guys have to determine where there's a circle that sort of fits. Now, this is a, a medicine cap lid, an ibuprofen lid, I think. And that looks like, oh, that'll fit when it's cut off here. That'll fit perfectly. But 
again, I'm showing this with a finished edge, okay? Usually I like to do a, a raw edge, but, but if you don't like that look, I'm going to be sort of appliquing this with a finished edge. And that little circle is too small, okay? Because we're going to be having to turn in the edge of this circle. And I will show you how to do that. So what I did is I got this, uh, that's to a, a drinking cup, I think. So it looks a little big, but it, I, it provides enough, again, it, it'll just be the half of it. it. It provides enough when we go to cut out our circle of, of enough fabric when we clip it and we can turn it around on our little template, which I'm going to make in a moment, enough that we can um, adhere it to our our um our block and it'll ha have a finished edge so i quite like that find a cup or a saucer or um anything a, a, a roll of tape or whatever that's to the lid of a drinking cup of a um to-go cup i think so i li quite like that again i'm taking a piece of card hi <laughs> of course i'm gonna do red right so i'm gonna take my red um, fat quarter here and I'm going to I am going to do the the um, the whole the whole circle but I'm only going to be using half my circle okay I can get two of these out of this one no oh, that does work yeah works so I'm just going to cut that in two I thought I could just do one but it does work out when I Position that on like so. So what we're going to be doing with our half little circle here is when it's positioned on, it's going to look like that. Now, by all means, if you wanted to just raw edge stitch that, that's absolutely fine. But I know a lot of people like the finished edge. And I usually like the raw edge. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just be clipping with a very pair, sharp pair of scissors, not quite a quarter of an inch in. Just all the way around. Whoops, I'm all, uh, off my thing. You need a pair of really nice sharp scissors for this, for this here. And then with my template, I'm going to go over to my ironing board, and I'm just going to press that, that edge in. So now it's coming time to applique my half Dresden onto my, my uh, background fabric. Now, by all means, you could do this in a long strip, having made all of our our um, Dresden plates and I'll show you how, what I'm going to do, be doing with my finished off little half circle there but right now I've just taken a, a block I'm just doing this in blocks I may want to uh, punctuate it with some rickrack I'm not quite sure so what I've done is I have cut a piece about ten and a half inches by about five and a half inches you can make this as long as you want or as short as you want you can make you can make um, maybe just four of these or you can make uh, t uh, six or seven of them if they fit on your row um, but this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be working on one of them. But as you can see, my script fabric is a little bit thin. And I'm going to do exactly like I did when I did my other applique block. Which is I have taken a very, 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 very thin, but a little bit substantial, iron-on interfacing. The nubbly side of this interfacing is the glue side. The smooth side is the, the side, the, the other side. <laughs> Yeah, the other side of card. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut out this interfacing, press an uh, iron on interfacing, the same size as my block here, or as my piece. I'm just going to cut that out like that. And I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm just going to make this, uh, this, um, block just slightly more substantial okay so I've ironed on my interfacing to the wrong side of my fabric I'm going to bring down my little half Dresden plate here and it fits nicely I, I quite like this size I'm not quite sure how many I'm going to have on on my on my next row maybe four maybe five I'm not quite sure um, I haven't even me measured it but that's the beauty of just winging it and not sticking to perfect precise uh, measurements you could have made that a little bit longer you could have made or a little bit wider you can made a bit lo a little bit longer whatever suits you I do have my finished edge as you can see pressed around my little card um, centerpiece here my center 
And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be placing my Dresden plate right on the edge. And again, a little bit's hanging off, but that's okay because that's going to be in the seam. And then what I'm going to do is, you know, I love my Elmer's glue stick. You can use a proper, not this is proper, um, you could use a... Um, sewing glue. I know there's Roxanne's glue, which is, uh, you can get at specialty shops. Um, but I quite like my invisible washable Elmer's glue stick. It goes on purple. It dries clear and it never ever has gummed up my needle. And I just put a little tiny bit on anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right at the tips, not quite at the point, but right up here, just to adhere my plate onto my fabric here. Again, I'm going to trim that off. So don't worry about that. It's going to be lovely and trimmed and look like that. So again, as most of you know, I absolutely love to use a blanket stitch or a satin stitch to, for an applique. If this perhaps was a raw edge, that would even be better because then the raw edge wouldn't show. But since this is a finished edge here, I'm just going to be using a straight stitch. Good old straight stitch. Now this part here, where it's a little bit funky, this is going to go on the seam, but I am just going to trim that little bit of fan off there. That's okay, like that. And now I'm going to start at this one point here, I'm going to put my needle down, and very close, not, not like a quarter inch away, but fairly close to the point, all I'm going to do is, if I, my pedal goes, I'm just going to do a straight stitch. That's it. I'm going to leave my needle down at the point. There is my lovely finished block. So here is my row along with jean quilt as I've done it so far. I think I have about six or seven tutorials on the applique here, on the tulip block, on the flying geese sashing, on the churn dash block, on the pinwheel, and on the um, sort of a checkerboard sashing here. Here is my little block down here. Okay, please excuse my wrinkled <laughs> my wrinkled uh, flannel tablecloth. Now what I'm going to do, there's my little uh, finished block, which obviously is raw edges. Now I've just noticed that this quilt here is, I think I, I said about 48 inches. All right, from that end to that end. It's not going to be a very large quilt because this is for beginners. So I think I'm just going to be doing about four of these. And you see this, let me just take this up here. So if I put one, obviously, well, in a row here. So if I put one there, I could actually have a little bit of a space, maybe a little bit of sashing on here. I could put one upside down there too. Do you see that? It doesn't They don't necessarily have to go all in a row like that. So I see, I see one, two, three, and then four with maybe a little bit of, um, maybe a little bit of rickrack in between. 16 of these and make a sweet little pillow. That'd be lovely. All right, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much. Love from the true loves.